Hello, you absolute legends. Of all of the fake retro gamers, you know the ones that claim to do impossible gaming feats in the 80s? Mine has to be Todd Rogers. Sure, he doesn't have a weird mullet or a nice suit, but what Todd lacks in style, he more than makes up for in sheer patheticness. It honestly must be hard for Todd. I mean, he's claimed more fake world records than anyone else. He claimed to have literally thousands of world records without a shred of evidence, and with many of them being proven impossible. And are you, do you hold any world records at this point? I hold over 2,000 world records. But what does he have to show for it? Where is the fame that is supposed to come with claiming video game world records? Todd looks at someone like his close friend Silly Bitchell and says to himself, where is my documentary? Where is my King of Kong? Why aren't people making movies about me? Outside of a tiny circle of Todd's friends, he really didn't get much fame from video games. Personally, I didn't even know who he was until his dragster score was found to be impossible. Before that, I had never heard of him. When his scores were removed from Twin Galaxies and Guinness World Records, Todd lost basically everything he had. But it wasn't over. Because the thing about narcissists is that it doesn't matter how they get attention, as long as they get some attention, it's better than nothing. Todd saw Bitchell getting a ton of press over filing lawsuits. And let's be honest, at this point Billy is more well known for being a vexatious litigant than he ever was as a video game player. And that gave Todd a bright idea. If Todd sued Twin Galaxies and Guinness World Records, this should get him and his imaginary scores back into the spotlight. Except it didn't. Todd filed a defamation lawsuit against Twin Galaxies and Guinness in 2020 and literally no one cared. There isn't a single news article about it, even after he ended up losing the lawsuit in spectacular fashion. The only reason anyone knows about this is because I made a video covering it, and that's just because I find Todd to be hilarious. After losing his first lawsuit against the record-keeping organizations, he sued them again, for the exact same thing, though he called it something different. This is the last update I provided, which I covered in a recent video. And since then, I'm so sorry to say that Todd Rogers has officially lost his lawsuit again. While Billy Mitchell lawsuits have a tendency to last years, Todd's end up failing after just a few months. The difference is that Todd doesn't have any money, so he can't hire a lawyer. Therefore, he represents himself. And that's really not a good thing, because Todd is an idiot. In this video, we are going to take a quick look at how Todd's second lawsuit went down. And I guess the million dollar question is will he try to sue them again? Third time is the charm after all. I really hope you enjoy. Now Legends, this video is sponsored by the military online game, War Thunder. And when it comes to vehicle combat games, War Thunder is the most content packed ever made. War Thunder contains over 2,000 unique vehicles, including tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships. It will literally take you years to experience them all. And each of them is finely crafted to be as realistic as possible. I am a history buff, so I love going back over 100 years and seeing how the tech evolved. I always get a mini history lesson when I play. Personally, I prefer air combat. Fights are a lot more fast-paced, and the movement is super intuitive and fun to learn, even with just a keyboard and a mouse. The soundscape of War Thunder is nothing short of epic, and the 4K graphics are incredibly impressive. But what's even more impressive is that War Thunder is free to play, and is available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And if you use my link in the description, there is a large free bonus pack waiting for you, which includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and much more. In August of last year, Todd Todgers sued Twin Galaxies and Guinness World Records for tortious interference with contract. I have no idea who told Todd to do that, because evidently, Todd doesn't know what tortious interference is. Nowhere in his original filing was Todd even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. The craziest claim was that Twin Galaxies and Guinness stopped Todd from selling a book which lost Todd a million dollars. Though the thing about this book is that it doesn't exist. I put up a bounty for someone to find it, and no one could do it. I won't go over everything again because I explained it all in my last video going over this lawsuit, but but Todd is just a crazy, crazy dude, and nothing in this lawsuit made sense. It didn't stand a chance, but Guinness and Twin Galaxies weren't messing around. 
On the 21st of November, they both submitted motions to dismiss on the same day. What I was shocked to find out is that Todd actually did try to serve Twin Galaxies and Guinness this time, which he didn't in the first lawsuit. Sometimes people with no money like to scare others by filing a lawsuit but not actually serving it. Therefore, it just sits there hanging over the defendant's head for a period of time, causing emotional stress. Todd doesn't have money or a chance of winning, so I assumed this was just for show and he wasn't that serious. For those not familiar with the legal process, when you sue someone you have to serve them the lawsuit papers, which makes the lawsuit official. You have to prove that the defending party has been made aware that they are in fact being sued. This is usually done by having someone with the appropriate authority giving the other party the papers in person. But Todd decided he would just try to serve them by sending the papers in the mail. In certain circumstances, this might be allowable, but only after you've exhausted every other potential avenue. Again, this is one of the pitfalls of both representing yourself and being an idiot. You won't do anything correctly, and you'll just end up getting nothing done. I really don't understand how you can be this bad though. Literally any research into serving papers tells you that you need to hire someone to do it. Todd clearly doesn't care to do even the tiniest amount of due diligence. In their motion to dismiss, Guinness claims that they can't be sued in Florida because it has no jurisdiction over them, given they are an English company. And this is where it gets pretty funny. In Todd's first lawsuit, he sued the North American division of Guinness. But in their motion to dismiss, Guinness North America said that Todd should sue the English branch of Guinness because they are the ones that produced the gamers edition of their book. This is the book that said Todd didn't achieve his drags to score. So in the second lawsuit, Todd sued the English company, but then he sent the legal papers to Guinness North America for some reason. Again, because he has no idea what he is doing. So in the new motion to dismiss, Guinness says that Todd can't sue them in Florida because they are an English company that doesn't run their business out of Florida. But even if he could sue them in Florida, he screwed up by trying to serve Guinness North America, a completely different company. Note to self kids, don't represent yourself. And it's not just the lack of service and lack of jurisdiction that Todd has to overcome. Guinness and Twin Galaxies both ripped into the meat of Todd's filing. And it's obvious they know what Todd's up to, with Guinness stating, in addition to plaintiff's above failures, plaintiff's complaint is a thinly veiled attempt to recast his claim for defamation, which is now time barred into a purported claim for tortious interference. Apparently, this is a common tactic employed by dimwits, with Twin Galaxies saying, Plaintiff has attempted to recast his claim of alleged defamation as a claim for tortious interference with business relationships to avoid the applicable statute of limitations. Plaintiff is not the first litigant to attempt this gambit. Not surprisingly, it has been roundly rejected in Florida courts. That is because Florida courts look to the reality of a claim, not to labels, to determine whether they are time barred. This is what I said in my previous video. Todd is trying to sue them for one thing, but what he put in the complaint itself is just defamation. What I found encouraging though, is just how much these motions to dismiss mirrored my own analysis. For example, in my video, I listed the elements for tortious interference and outlined why Todd doesn't convey these sufficiently. And then in the motions to dismiss, they do the exact same thing. The difference is they have to go a step beyond and provide case law. Basically, they have to cite previous examples of where these issues were argued in court and use the precedents created by past judges. Guinness points out that Todd fails to even identify his alleged book. And I love how they say alleged book, asserting that even the idea that a book exists is questionable. But really, the crux of the issue of Todd's lawsuit is perfectly outlined by Guinness in the final paragraph, stating, Nowhere does plaintiff allege that defendant's actions were tortious. Plaintiff fails to allege anything that Guinness World Records did wrong. No wrongful conduct at all is alleged that would constitute tortious conduct under Florida law. For all of the foregoing reasons, plaintiff's complaint against Guinness should be dismissed for failure to state a cause of action. Now, after a motion to dismiss is filed, the plaintiff usually has 14 days to respond, though in a shocking twist, Todd did not. I mean, can you imagine what kind of insane, twisted ramblings would arise if Todd actually did respond to these motions? It would have been awesome, but alas, no response was filed. And just 14 days later, the judge responded to the motions with his order, stating, The captioned matter was brought before the court on December 5, 2022, to consider defendants' motions to quash service and motions to dismiss. After reviewing the motions, lack of response 
response thereto and relevant portions of the court file, it is ordered. 1. Defendant Guinness's motion to quash service is granted. Certified mail on the incorrect legal entity is not proper service under Florida law. 2. Defendant's motion to dismiss for lack of personal jurisdiction is granted. The complaint contains insufficient allegations to satisfy Florida's long-arm jurisdiction statute. 3. Defendant's motion to dismiss for failure to state a cause of action is granted. The claim for tortious interference fails to establish any of the elements of this claim. And finally, Defendant EF Sports, which is Twin Galaxies, motion to quash service and motion to dismiss is granted for the same reason set forth above with respect to Guinness. I'm extremely curious if Todd will try something again. It would be kind of hard to do because now so many years have passed since the original claims, but again, Todd is an idiot, so I'm sure he could think of some way to do it. What I'm really surprised about is the lack of emotion by the defendants to seek costs. The motions to dismiss were lengthy and probably cost thousands of dollars to create, and given this was Todd's second frivolous lawsuit, surely the judge would grant some costs back to Guinness and Twin Galaxies. Of course, it wouldn't be a large amount, but a message has to be sent that there will will be consequences for these frivolous lawsuits. If there are any lawyers watching, I would love to hear your thoughts on the prospects of getting back some costs this early in the proceedings. Perhaps the lawsuit was thrown out so quickly, a judge wouldn't order costs. So if anyone knows, please post in the comments. Is this finally the end of the Todd Rogers saga? Or will he come back yet again? I would love to hear your predictions. Also, once again, use the link in the description to download and play War Thunder. It's free, it's fun, and it's awesome. Plus, using my link will get you a bunch of free bonus goodies, so definitely click the link and check it out. As always, thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.